So hi folks. Uh, thanks again for being patient while I uh, I got back to working on my latest uh, my latest knife. Uh, if you've seen the earlier videos, you saw that this was my first attempt at a rare old spike knife. Um, turned out okay. I was, uh, was actually cutting bananas for my goats this morning with this one. Um, not that bananas are a particularly good test of a knife edge, but it holds up. It cuts through twine. It's cut through some paper. Um, in fact, let me just give that a whirl, and uh, here we go. Um, not not very hardenable, apparently. Um, low carbon, but uh, the edge is okay. It's uh, it's functional around the workshop and the yard. But with the concerns about getting a harder edge, um, here's Mark II. And Mark II, what I did was uh, I took some coil spring. Um, this is what's left of it. It uh, came off the end of this guy that broke. I got new coil springs, and I thought, well, let's start making uh, making use of this, um, adding it into the knife. So I did this uh, this kind of San Mai affair. And got it in there and if you saw the end of the last video you remember that I had some concerns about some faults here um, where the the spike met the coil spring um, the forge weld went pretty well and uh, you can see everywhere else the, uh, the, the there's no real issue with the weld itself I think what happened here is because the edges weren't aligned as I continue to uh, to forge the, the blade, um, but not at welding temperature, I effectively peened the the end of the, the railroad spike across the face of the knife, and that's what you're seeing here really, is just an unwelded piece being pushed across. I don't think it's particularly deep, um, I, I've, <laughs> I guess it was deep, I've done quite a bit of grinding on this um, to see if I could get rid of it, and ended up with quite a dimple there, so I had to set the blade a little bit thinner than and I, I really wanted, um, still quite stout I guess, but um, uh, yeah, so we didn't end up in a bad place despite those faults, we'll, uh, we'll consider those part of the learning curve, and uh, here's a close up on the faults, um, I don't think they're too much of an issue, they don't go particularly deep, um, go on to the other side and it's actually in a different place, so we'll not worry about those too much for now. So the next thing to do on this is do the heat treat and resharpen. Although again, um, even without the heat treat, we, uh, we don't have a bad edge on this at all. Um, makes pretty good confetti. Probably does pretty well at bananas. Anything harder than that, I'm not really sure. So, but you see this um, piece of coil spring here. It's not overly brittle I've dropped it on the floor and it doesn't break but I put it in the vise and try to bend it I mean what is it quarter of an inch thick and it seems pretty stout I can't I can't bend it which bodes well for this having a good edge and this coil spring actually being worthwhile uh, to put in there so what I'm going to do next is do the heat treat um, regrind resharpen um, and finalize this this knife and uh, hopefully it will be of some use the knife is still cold. Um, put it in the forge and do a few weeks of heat cycle on it. Um, Normalise the metal um, after all that pounding on it. A lot of stress and strain in there. So um, hopefully all that will get released with a few heat cycles before we go into the final heat treat. The other things I'm going to do um, is I'm going to pre-warm the oil. Uh, that's a good idea. Um, around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, I believe. Um, we're probably going to estimate that. I don't have uh, a thermometer handy. So I'm going to warm up this piece of rebar and dunk it in the oil. And hopefully that will give me a pre-warm of the oil.
how clearly you can see that. You can almost see that delamination at the end where the spike was cooling down at a different uh, rate, cooling down faster because it's not attached to the main blade. And actually you can see some of the, um, almost see where the forge weld was made. I'm sure there's people out there getting really upset right now. Because not only have I got a red hot blade, which is pretty sharp, but I'm waving it around in front of my legs with shorts on. Um, a lot of people wear a lot of protective equipment, and I probably should do that, but I'm not. So. You'll be able to laugh when I, uh, when I burn myself or stab myself in the leg. That would make for a better YouTube video, I'm sure. Okay, we're nearly there. Just going for the... Uh, just about getting magnetic there, so let's just set you back. A few more seconds. Heat treat uh, didn't go great, so I uh, I did a second one, which went a little better. Still not convinced I got uh, uh, full hardness, but uh, here's the result. And obviously you can still see those uh, faults, but the next one will be better.